You have inherited the frenzied flame. A pity. Should you rise as the Lord of Chaos, I will kill you. seek you as far as you may travel. Lord of Frenzied Flame. One year ago, I uploaded my first Elden Ring build guide to this channel. And to celebrate a year of getting hit by arrows in Stormvale and moaning about Gideon, I figured it was about time to do the most requested build on this channel, a frenzied flame build. But because the options for this one are pretty limited and I'm probably the last person on YouTube to make it, I thought I'd approach this run a little bit differently. Unlike my other videos, this is not a guide that prioritizes approachability. In this video, I'll show you how powerful you can make a character when there are no rules and nothing is off limits. We're gonna use some glitches and exploits that you've seen before on this channel and many that you haven't to unlock every area of the game straight away and go grab the most powerful late game frenzy spell before we fight anything. We're gonna get a max level weapon and maximum damage before Margit and use every overpowered spell at our disposal to bully Elden Ring as the Lord of Chaos. To get set up, I used my standard setup guide, link to the full video and play along guide in the description. So the first thing on the agenda, we need to get to the consecrated snowfield. So head to Altus, all the way up towards Lane Dell. Now I know I said we can do this setup without fighting, but you may wish to kill the Draconic Tree Sentinel, as the grace behind him makes the next part a lot less frustrating. So run up and aggro him, then ride over to this rock and jump off. Watch him from behind this wall, then run towards the cliff as he passes this tree. All we have to do here is parry him, then punch him to yeet him off. You can do this on the first jump attack if you're super confident, but if it looks too risky, you can do what I'm doing here. Now we have the grace. So to get to the snowfields, we first need to access the mountaintops of the giants. And to do this, we need to skip Lane Dell. We can do this using the zip glitch. If you're interested in learning more about zips, I'd highly recommend Dara Vey's very in-depth videos on them. Zips are only really possible on PC. They are technically possible on console, but from what I've heard, they're a nightmare to do consistently. Everyone's method for performing zips is slightly different. 
What works for me is two-handing a weapon, setting a metronome to exactly 108 beats per minute, then press and hold block on beat one of the metronome, then quickly tap W on beat five. Zips are notoriously difficult to get the hang of. It probably took me half hour to do one the first time that I tried it. But this area is actually a great place to learn, as you'll get a zip pretty much every time your timing is perfect. In other places in the game, your direction and aim is far more important in getting the zip to work. Your equip load adjusts the distance of the zip, but this one can be done with both medium and heavy loads. From this rock, you can use torrent to jump down and light the forbidden lands, Grace. Right up to the great lift of rolled. Now again, we have a problem. We don't have the rolled medallion, but stand anywhere in this area by the grace, open your map and walk back to the round table. When the loading bar hits 100%, force close your game. On your way through the Zamor ruins, use the Draconic weapon to knock this scarab out of the tree. Cast the wrong spell at him, then kill him for a Sombre Seven. Ride through the mountaintops past the Snow Valley Overlook, Grace, then take a left at the T-junction to find this Spirit Spring. Ride across the Spirit Spring and jump into the corner between the bush and the boulder. Then jump to your left as you're falling. What you're doing here is jumping between two slightly mislined kill planes. I was actually watching when Distortion 2 figured out this skip live, and happily, it's not quite as rough as it looks. When you land, follow this route to get to a teleporter. I'll leave a link in the description to a super precise and safe route down these cliffs. But before I got into Souls games, Skyrim was my main game. So jumping down cliffs on a horse is somewhat of a speciality of mine. The teleporter will drop you at the minor Ur tree in the snowfields, from which you can ride safely down to Ordinar Town. Ride to the Yilo Annex Ruins, into the left building and make the jump to grab possibly the coolest incantation in the game. Now since we have access to both the Halig Tree and Mogwin's Palace, let's go get some late game damage. Head to the Mogwin's Teleporter and jump onto this ledge to cheese the invader. Then into Mogwin's Palace and up to the Palace Approach. Chuck something at a pillar to distract these lot and grab a Sombre 10. Yes, I forgot to press record. And you know what's coming now. Run into Moog's arena, then quit out. Back to the grace and jump down the cliffs. Possum's guide to this skip is in the description and I'd suggest that you follow that as I'm sure my route gets more complicated every time I do this glitch. When you get to the hole, begin to jump down into it, but before you fall, pop the foul foot from the setup. Make sure you double jump into the hole and keep swinging your weapon as you fall. When you get the message saying Moog is dead, warp out to the grace. Now we have the runes for a very balanced mid-game character. Or 78 faith. So grab 78 faith. Then head back to Volcano Manor to grab the Ur Tree Seal. Then to EG to level it to plus 10. So we're at maximum damage with a max weapon. 
Now it's time to grab some bits. Head to the Bridge of Iniquity in Altus and across the battlefield for Golden Vow. Then to the frenzied flame tower in northern Lyurnia to grab the Howl of Shabriri. Then through the village to get frenzied bolt from this scarab. Now to the Rockview balcony in Kaelid to bully the tree avatar for the flame shrouding tier. Then to the road of iniquity in Mount Gilmere to kill the tree spirit. And you might think this would be a nightmare, but stay on Torrent, keep your distance and cast Frenzied Bolt and it's fine. Head to the Seathwater Terminus Grace in Mount Gilmere and all the way to the top of Fort Lied for the Fire Scorpion Charm. Next we're going to go for an early Commander O'Neill fight. And usually when we do this on a faith build, we very carefully snipe him from a distance with Frenzy Bolt. Here's what we're going to do on this build though. Cast Golden Vow, Howl of Shabriri, then drink your Physic at the last possible moment. The Flame Shrouding tier boosts our damage, and the Cerulean Hidden tier means that we can cast continuously. Take the needle to Gowrie for repair, then give it to Millicent. Speak to Millicent in Gowrie's shack, then head up to the Shaded Castle for the prosthesis. Give this to Millicent at the Erdtree Gazing Hill, then... It's a Lord of Chaos build, what did you expect? Kill Gowrie for the Phlox Canvas Talisman, then back to the Round Table to get Pest Threads. Then to the Lux Ruins in Altus, to bully the demi-human queen for the ritual sword talisman. And finally, down into the high road cave in Limgrave to bully the golem for the blue dancer charm. Now I wanted to get to the three fingers as early as possible in this run, but it does involve killing Morgoth. So before we head to Langdale, I wanted to see what this does to Margit and Godric. After Godric, head through the last part of the castle for the Shabriri Grape. Then back to Weeping Peninsula to speak to Irina. Doing this will make Hyetta appear at the lake facing cliffs. Give her a Shabriri Grape. Then down to the good old putrefied ruins and down into the cellar for another Shabriri Grape. There's a faith talisman in that chest for complete casuals who don't have 80 faith after Godric. Speak to Hyetta again then to the Revenger Shack in West Leonia to kill Edgar. Back to Hyetta near the Broken Bridge in Leonia. Then finally, speak to her again in Bellum Church and give her the Fingerprint Grape, which you can get from killing Vike. As always, Godfrey isn't one for being bullied around. So if you think that we can just walk in here, do one attack and kill him, you'd be absolutely correct. For a very consistent Morgoth on this build, just get him to the phase two transition before you unleash the frenzy. However, when I first recorded this guide about a month ago on patch 1.09, I did have a little bit of extra vigor, which enabled me to brute force it 
a little more. That vigor isn't worth it overall though. Now down into the shunning grounds. The sewers are a nightmare to navigate as always. But because this is a very silly run, I'll show you a little skip that you can do here to cut out a decent chunk. When you reach this area and the lower set of stairs, run into this wall and jump around aiming for the lift. Time an R1 for when you hit the top of the lift to sneak yourself in for a less strenuous journey down. Now for Omen Moog, and we have 13 Vigor and Flame Spells are completely useless. So memorize Pest Threads and equip the Blue Dancer Charm. This is a little rough, but if you keep your distance and only cast after one of his projectile attacks, it's not that bad. Grab the talisman in the chest, punch the altar, and head through. Now I know what you're thinking. Does the most clumsy gamer in the world have any tips for getting down a really tough platforming section? And yes, I have one tip. If you want to break an enemy's stance without hurting them, just hit them with a shield. Now let's see what this build does to Wolf and Renata. Okay, what about Radar? Noble should not be as easy though, as he's highly resistant to flame. Now at this point, the only thing limiting our damage output is our madness buildup. So head down into the Seathwater Cave for the mushroom set. Time for Fire Giant. To do as much damage as we can in phase two, I use Pest Threads in phase one to avoid any madness buildup. And for phase two,
and Duo could be a problem as they're both resistant to fire and have a lot of health. For maximum damage, try to get them to sleep as close together as you can. For Beastie Kef, we're going to save the Frenzy all for Malaketh. So hit Beast with Pest Threads. This is relatively consistent if you cast after dodging his projectiles. And for Malaketh? Now for the best fight of the entire run. For Godfrey, we have a problem. You know what I want to do here. Stagger Horolu and skip the whole fight. But after testing every incantation I could think of, there was nothing that did enough posture damage for a convenient Horolu stagger. But after many attempts, it finally dawned on me. So I went super aggressive with Catch Flame on Godfrey and took my own advice. If you want to break an enemy's stars without hurting them, just hit them with a shield. For Radagon, I went with Catch Flame, so I could see the true potential of Frenzy on Elden Beast. Now I'm pretty sure that if you got very lucky with RNG, you could one-shot Nile. However, if you want a consistent method for this fight, get rid of the summons with Catch Flame, then get his health down to about 80%. Then just wait for the big tornado attack.
run through the Halic Tree all the way to Loretta. And unfortunately, with all of the spell spamming and her jumping around as she does, bullying her with Frenzy is almost completely down to RNG. So for a consistent fight, I went with parries and catch flame, then finished off with Frenzy. And finally, for Melania. Now, when I did this build on patch 1.09, I killed Melania in four casts of Frenzy, two in each phase. But coming back to it, I thought I could do better. In phase one, hit her with Frenzied Bolt and keep your distance. The only attack you'll have to dodge is the second half of Waterfowl, with three rolls, one o'clock, one o'clock, six o'clock. When she has one hit left, buff up and take it. And that's what's possible if you spend longer setting up your character than you do on the actual run. Thanks for the support this last year. There are many more Elden Ring build guides to come. This will be an Elden Ring channel until long after Shadow of the Earth Tree's release. For now though, with Armored Core, Lies of P and Laws of the Fallen around the corner, I want to dive into those and hopefully bring you some fresh, informative, and maybe even entertaining content while we wait. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.